if you are thinking about doing cutouts for any reason whatsoever, you're going to want to see this video. Dropped it on the back of my leg with a bunch of bees on it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Had it been here a couple of months at least. That big? Yeah. Yeah, a little bitty hole, huh? Yep. Can you see it? Yeah, because it's such a small hole. Huh? Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. Thank you for joining us today. I've got a couple of videos here today that I'm going to kind of, I, I got a voiceover because my GoPro 8 ate my audio again on the on this kind of long clip where I'm explaining a lot of this. Uh, this first job that you just saw. that was so anyway the first job that you just saw that's all the footage I shot of it uh, for a reason this guy I used to play baseball against in Babe Ruth leagues when we were 13 14 years old and uh, we get to this house and it's just it's a mansion and I had to look it up on Zillow just out of curiosity curiosity was killing the cat I wanted to see how well is this guy actually doing two and a half million dollar property on the beach in Mississippi that's a lot of money and that's a big house and I was like wow good for you dude but I, I didn't want to show anything about his property other than the hive you can see what we're working with there is a space about this big I could only get my forearm about halfway up in that hole so I couldn't even reach as far back as the hive was everything was done with long reach tools so really nowhere to sit the camera we got them out rehomed them on waxed foundations uh this is one where the guy lied to me man how come you got the cable guy <laughs> how come he works on cable time now i guess okay on this next job you're going to want to watch this if you want to do them for free this is going to show you you're going to run into a dead out you're going to run into a dead out more times than you care to imagine I don't normally show videos of dead outs because they're just not that interesting, but just did one with Yappy that was basically a dead out. We, we found a colony, a live queen, but the hive was done. This is another one that's a dead out, but it's a good teaching opportunity for those of you who are wanting to do cutouts for any reason, really. But this one here, the, on the business end of it, I'm going to discuss that a little on this video, and I don't normally but this is a good opportunity uh, to show you what can happen and what does happen and as well as I take a phone call from a prospective customer and you get to hear me talk them through uh, basically the phone interview that I do with most of these people because I don't go out and look at these jobs before I do them this one here is a rare instance where I did because another beekeeper had already been working on it and decided not to complete the job and uh, and I knew he was familiar with cutouts, so I wanted to go see why Why did he not want to do this job. Well, basically, it was because there was a power line running in the side of this house right there where the bees are. And so I had to call an order, disconnect, get the reconnect, all this kind of stuff. That's time that you need to factor in when you're bidding these jobs. It took me about an hour on the phone to order a disconnect. It took me another 10, 15 minutes to get the lineman back out 
uh, to get him on the phone to get him back out to reconnect. That's an hour and 15 minutes of your day that somebody's got to pay for. You can pay for it out of your pocket with just giving your time or the homeowner who is benefiting from your services can pay for it, which is the way it should be. So factor that into your price. And also, when we scheduled this job, the lineman was supposed to be out between 7.30 and 8 to disconnect. I got there at 7.30, immediately set up, prep, ready to go to work. Uh, Pete overslept. He was late. <laughs> <laughs> uncharacteristic I'm usually the one <laughs> running late but this time it was Pete but it didn't matter because the lineman didn't show up until almost nine o'clock so it was nine o'clock before we got the power shut off and we were able to get the job uh, going you know, further in the heat of the day dead middle of summer factor these things in you have no control over what time this guy's going to show up or, or whatever other factors there are going on that are beyond your control get and when you price give a range on something like this where there's kind of unknown factors give a range if everything goes smoothly this is your price but plan for the worst and we'll hope for the best and it gives you a little bit of cushion so you don't have to be so stressed if you're running up on time and you've told them it's this much no more regardless and now all of a sudden you've been on the job for three hours longer than you expected or you ran into needing more materials like on this one comes the rain on this one um one of the unforeseens was that t111 behind that vinyl siding it's not a problem we still have to cut sheathing normally but normally with sheathing you can see where the nails are with t111 it's kind of buried in the texture of the wood and the paint can't really see where the nails are you just kind of you cut wherever and then build back structure so all that dead wood that we had to use back there is uh, extra money out of pocket the extra screws that went into it the potential for wasting a blade for not knowing where nails are you go over nails or screw heads or something with a blade you can ruin a blade really easy <laughs> that's the tool clean that with the electricity off they got a little more as soon as he got come over here and he had the electricity off now they were clustered up there yeah they're not clustered they're off of it now <laughs> i didn't show you all this yet somebody remodeled and when they did they built out around the mast and the weather head so this is siding over siding i assume it's a two by four stack over some old siding and then vinyl they just brought it out to the end of the weather head so bees are going in here Moving up, building right here. I need to go talk to the power company guy before he gets out of here. They're stapled down. What's stapled? Sagging. Oh. It's stapled. There's a five and one and a catch ball. <laughs> oh. You really think I went up here without one? <laughs> no. My favorite tool, you know that. I know it's wrong. Straight where two come together, I'm stuck in that notch. Don't let it beat you. Oh, uh, it beat you. <laughs> <laughs> beat myself with that one. I hear people talk vinyl siding is so simple, so easy. Not if you take any of the part. <laughs> or putting back together. Yeah. And you gotta match up laps on the existing job. Brand new install, sure. Because a staple instead of nail, it has no flexibility like it's supposed to have. Yeah. So I can't push it to get it on jam. There it goes. I don't know what it was, but it was nasty. <laughs> Tastes like dirt. 
Here you go. All you're doing is breaking the staples out. We'll build a different path. That's not a big deal. That is uh, 111 behind it. And then there's space behind it. It says siding over siding over siding. This is the siding. It's painted and everything. There's, there's wax moth chrysalis up around it. I thought Whether, that's what that was. I wasn't sure. Yeah. yeah. So this is at least hive number two. These things always turn out to be more complicated than you could ever imagine. That ants infestation too all over. Just peel that foil back and figure where the studs are and we'll cut on or as close to as we can so we can put that wood back when we're done. I'll go get the skill saw. We're doing real good. So they on the inside wall right there, y'all videoed them. They went in right there on the mast there. That's what I was looking behind at. the side yeah. and then behind that T111 too. <laughs> this is where we seem to make them mad. Oh yeah. yeah we don't need y'all. We got stuff. <laughs> How many times you get stoned? So far, none. Anywhere in that area, just pick a spot. So the black ones, they ain't no such thing. Yeah, they. Yeah, they got them, but they're not any meaner than. Oh, them. really? That well, I guess for him messing with them, I guess the black ones that got him more than the yellow. I'd cut it? down as low as you can. That's what I'm fixing to adjust. So we're not making multiple cuts. No, I don't mean. Uh, I, I adjusted the depth of the blade. I mean, come all the way down to that side, and if you can. I would hold that for you, but I got a camera. That's more important. Well, yeah. <laughs> now I need to the special tool. All right, which one? Obviously. Just lay that blade in there. Just lay that blade across that angle. Yeah, I'm talking about for that side. Oh, okay. It's the first time I ever found a bandana that fit around my head. You can check out the zoo and see what they use for the gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to keep the sweat out of my eyes is all I'm concerned about. That and looking like I'm going to a Cheech and Chong concert. <laughs> I got bees escaping from the hole I've cut. All right. But I need another. This ain't doing it. I need another. All right. This one with a lot more. Ladder in a good spot? Yeah. It ain't the ladder. It's me. Jeez. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's because we're my first day on the job. Well, it's because of where that cut is. It's springy on that. You're not on framing, so it's making that side and springy. You got power coming in on one end of the house and the breaker panel for the whole house is on the other end of the house. 
there. Eight foot walls. Uh, nine. Crown molding. Not in her room though. Texture or wallpaper. I uh, just painted sheet rock. What's the floor? Uh, carpet right now. Room full of stuff. Yeah. Y'all. Y'all live in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. How long the bees been there? What's the siding on the house? Uh, it's just, it's just brick exterior. Brick veneer up to, is that a gable end or is it just a soffit? Uh, just a soffit, yeah. It, does it, is it brick and meets up to the siding or it meets up to soffit? Uh, brick meets up to the soffit, yeah. Are you sure they're in the wall? Are they going in around the panel or are they going in uh, somewhere on the wall? They're, defi they're, they're definitely going behind the panel. Yeah, you, you, you can hear them in her room, loud, clear, bumping the wall, buzzing. How old's the house? Built in 2000. And, no, excuse me, built in 1998. Yeah, a lot of bees in this Well, it's the remnants of a colony. You just never know. Never know till you get into them. Got good activity on them, no robbing. Or no fighting, rather. Yeah, that was uh, that was treacherous. Coming down that ladder with all that weight. I thought you was gonna lose your balance. I was gonna have to catch you. Well, that, that was due to the humidity and, and the sweat in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, if y'all didn't know it, we live in a subtropical climate. And yeah. it's like early July. <laughs> early July. Look at the sweat. Happy birthday, America. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Happy 4th of July. He, he's trying to make me edit this video right now is what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> if I edit a month from now and say Happy 4th of July, I don't mean nothing. One section clean, down to section number two. This is the nasty one. You know, this is an odd build. Yeah, the more I look at it, yeah, there was old side and they stripped that off, framed this up, resided with T111, and then at some point, instead of painting, they sided with vinyl. Dude, that is slimy. Yes, it is. I didn't lie to you. Here. Here. That's nasty, bro. It's been slimed. But it's going to go bye bye now. Fade away. Fade away. And pull back. <laughs> uh oh. What? Can you not see him fall out of this thing as I did this? No. The bees you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's still a little group up in there. Need smoke? Yeah. I got plenty. Wherever they're at, it's a pocket of them. It's probably blowing flames by now. So be careful. this time <laughs> you hear them yeah 
They're all backing out of the hole and staying right around your head. Mm hmm Bumping me too. I got bumped in the face twice, once in the shoulder. You want a hood or you good? The only bump, I ain't got a sting yet. Yeah. How many of them you want? Uh, a good Get one to start right here. And that'll stop it from falling on us. Now we can work it. Gotta call that electro guy and he can come in and do what he's gotta do now. Other than the ladder, you don't know we were up there. It's time to pack up and get out of this sauna. Well, how much weight did you lose today? Well, it'd be in ounces, uh, I mean in liquid, probably a gallon or two. I'm liking this little widow peak on my bandana. It's got somewhere for the water to drip instead of in my face. The end of another successful cutout on an extraordinarily hot and humid day. Heat ain't that bad, but the humidity just... I thought we were gonna get rained out there. Yeah, I, I hit that really wet. It looked like it was saturated. All of a sudden I come down the road, bright white and no, not wet, no nothing. It was raining when I got here. So I brought the generator for a couple reasons. One was we were killing the power to the house and we thought the homeowner's wife was going to be inside while we were doing this job. So I want something to run a refrigerator and a fan. Uh, she had to go, so we just used it to run tools. Nobody's been in there opening a refrigerator or anything. We got this done fairly quickly, so fixing to get the power guys back out here to kick the power back on. Finish cleaning up our mess and putting tools up. We'll be done. Headed to get some crispy, crunchy chicken. It's usually what happens. Please leave your message after the tone. Hey, it's Randy over here on the road. We're done with those bees. Ready for that power reconnect. Hey. Coffee you want. Black cherry. Same color shirt you're wearing today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we match. We're Twinkies. 
Look at that privet hedge blooming in July. July 3rd, privet hedge is blooming. It's fixing to go on well. A lot of little green ones are all over it. That's odd. It's Yappy and Mr. Ed in their booster seats at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> we'll make more. Uh, we're just waiting on the power company to show back up. Reconnect. Look up over in there. Can't even tell we were here. Other than the fact that bees are no longer flying in and out of that hole. Oh, I, I filled the hole. The hole blocked off. Back and front. You did it from the inside, yep. The job's sweet when we're done. <laughs> I'm not a professional, but I do play one on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> Let me finish this video out with some tips on cutouts. Whether you're doing them for free or charging, this should be a help to anybody. Number one, know something about construction. Don't go in there and not knowing construction, not having any clue where to look for the bees, where they could possibly be building. Cut up somebody's house and you ain't even found the bees and you got holes everywhere. No construction first. Uh, especially with the more difficult ones, you can really get yourself in a pickle and um, you know, cutting in places where there's wires or plumbing or anything like that can get you in a spot where you financially it's gonna be detrimental to you at, at worst land you in a lawsuit at best cost you a lot of extra time fixing something that could have been easily sidestepped if you knew what you were doing number two your customer does not know how long those bees have been there. Just go in there with that mindset that your customer has no clue how long the bees have been there. It's really common that they'll say two weeks or something like that because they they cut their own grass, they trim their own hedges. Surely they would have seen bees there before. People are not as observant as they think they are. And so a lot of times you'll see somebody that's got, they saw a little elevated, act, heightened activity on a hive and they just noticed them. And so surely that's when they moved in. You know, you're expecting this cute little cantaloupe of a hive and you get in there and you've got a three or four foot tall hive in a wall or, or you know, six foot long hive in a floor joist or whatever it is. So don't take your customer's word for it how long they've been there. They're not trying to mislead you most of the time. Although sometimes after somebody's shopped around a little bit and they figured out how long, or, or the longer the hive's been in there, the more it's gonna cost to get it out. Sometimes they start, their memory starts slipping. It's, you know, I don't remember seeing them in there more than the past month, but that's, that's pretty uncommon. But don't take their word for it because they're usually wrong. Number three, price in a range. This will protect you to some degree and the homeowner will understand. So if you're looking at a job that you think is gonna be a $600 job, and I'm just throwing random numbers out for the sake of conversation, tell them it's gonna be six to $800. If it's a you know $1,500 job, it's gonna be 15 to 18. The bigger the price of the job, the bigger the cushion needs to be. So 2,000 to 2,500, whatever, your uh, price is add something to it to, to have a little cushion there that you can say look we're gonna plan for the 600 but if we run into unforeseen that cost us extra hours extra materials extra whatever it could go up to this that way they're budgeting they're planning for that because if you come in there at your $600 and you get in there and it, caught, it took you an extra four hours you and another guy and more materials and this and that and you need to come back to them and say, look, I know I said 600, but we're in deep. I'm, I'm gonna need, we're gonna need to, to uh, renegotiate this. <laughs> and they have a budgeted for that. Well, then you're both stuck. Either they're gonna have an IOU to you or you're gonna just walk away with your $600 and eat the rest of it, which is more than likely what's gonna happen. Um, so price in a range. And I think I'm, I'm going to end with that because we could go on this stuff all day. But part of, I, I'll, t I'll say one more thing and, and I'll lead it into, I'll let it lead into something that we can discuss later. If somebody tells me, and I get this a lot, new bee removers or even seasoned bee removers, surprisingly, will tell me people just won't pay to have hives removed in my area. They won't pay that much. <clears throat> to have hives removed you know i'm doing it for a hundred dollars 
you can't do high removals for hundred dollars, two hundred, even three hundred dollars sometimes. It's it's ridiculous to expect somebody to work all day long for a hundred bucks just because you think they're getting some free bees or some free honey or whatever you think they're getting out of it. That is just dumb as as it can be. The world doesn't work like that. You can't do that for for an extended period of time. You'll go broke. But I, I got a lot to say about that. And I'm gonna leave you with a quote from Jim Rome. When somebody says they just won't pay that much here, and I say it's not that they won't pay that much there; they won't pay you that much there. <laughs> that goes into a whole different discussion. Listen to some Brian Traces and Jim Rohn. You know some of that stuff. Learn how to sell, because a lot of the problem is you just don't know how to sell, or you you present yourself wrong, or you don't have confidence in what you're saying or you don't know what you're talking about when you're trying to sell these jobs don't undersell yourself be fair to yourself be fair to your customer and we'll we'll cut it there we're going to the illinois conference this weekend if you're in the area come see us me mr ed will be there cayman reynolds will be there natalie summers will be there Corey stevens will be there and a whole bunch of other folks will be there that i can't think of off the top of my head but Mississippi Valley Beekeepers Association puts on the Illinois State Conference this coming weekend, July, whatever. Today's the 11th, so whatever this coming weekend is. And hope to see you there. Hope this was a helpful video. Y'all have a great day. Garden of mine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it, man. See a uh, difference in the eyes on the queen and the drone. The drone looks more like a horse fly. Of course, the queen's got a huge abdomen, comparatively speaking, but the drone's a lot fatter. You just not as long and got buggy eyes.